The doctrine of abrogation. Now, as Christians, we believe that God can give revelations in one covenant and then later on can make a different covenant with a different group of people. That's right. um, so what's the difference here with this doctrine of abrogation that Muslims believe in? Why would we consider this a problem? Yeah, by the way, we'll do number seven, but you did skip number eight, robbery. Oh, sorry. So we want to do number seven? Or so? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, the thing that the difference is what we have in the scriptures is we have God announcing a future covenant that takes centuries for it to be fulfilled. So circumstances have changed, the people have changed, and God is preparing people for a new covenant that doesn't uh, necessarily cancel out the previous uh, commandments, but uh, fulfills them, <clears throat> and, and uh, they're consummated in the coming of Christ. What you have in the Quran is a phenomenon in which Muhammad will say, look, this is what we're going to do today, uh, or this is what should be done today, and then the very next day or the next week, he comes and says, you know what? What I told you that week prior, forget about it. It's been abrogated. It's been canceled out. That led the disbelievers to accuse Muhammad of forging the Quran, and their response is actually reflected in the Quran itself. So let me just look at two references to see what the Quran says, where the response of the people to Muhammad saying, you know what, that's been canceled out. That's been abrogated, what I told you, the day before or the week prior. Chapter 2, verse 106 says, None of our revelations do we abrogate <clears throat> or cause to be forgotten, but we substitute something better or similar. Knowest thou not that Allah hath power over all things? Don't you know that we have power over all things? This is a demonstration of our power. But let me read a little more accurate translation. Hilali Khan, whatever verse do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, we bring a better one or similar to it. Know you not that Allah is able to do all things? This is a word of rebuke to those who are questioning the wisdom behind abrogating passages. Allah is saying, man, don't you see this as a display of my power, my sovereignty? Can't, can't you get it? I, I have the right to do this because I have the power to do this? Well, number, number 16, verse 101. <laughs> uh, let me read this. And when we change a verse, 16, 101, when we change a verse <clears throat> in place of another, and Allah knows best of what he sends down, they, meaning the disbelievers say, you are a forger, a liar, muftari. Nay, but most of them know not. You see the response of disbelievers? You're making this thing up, man. If this is really from an all-knowing God, surely God is not going to cancel out the previous verse when he knows all things, he knows all factors, so he's going to write the correct, uh, recite the correct verse from the get-go. And Muhammad says, no, man, that's not how it works. This is a display of the power of Allah. He's showing you that he can do what he wants because he has the power to do it. So he'll tell you, don't do this today, but then tomorrow, next day, he says, no, I want you to go ahead and do it. But you know what's even more troubling for a Muslim? Now, to me... This is great proof that this cannot be from the Quran. In 2.106, notice carefully what Allah supposedly says. <clears throat> Whatever verse do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, we bring a better one or similar to it. Now, I can understand you bringing something better, but why would you replace a verse with something similar? If it's similar, it's basically the same, isn't it? I mean, mm -hmm. you're basically saying the same thing. So then why even cancel it out for something similar? I can understand that you'd, you'd give something better in its place, but even that introduces problem, problems. How can some verses be better than other verses? I thought all of this is the speech of God. And not only the speech of God, it's the uncreated, eternal speech of God. Mm -hmm. Are you saying that in some instances, Allah speaks better than in other instances? Mm -hmm. is, that, is that what mm -hmm. the Muslim wants me to believe? Yeah, and the, the additional problem I see is it, it, this is Allah's eternal word, right? Yeah. And in Allah's eternal word, on our last program, we talked about verse of the Quran saying that if this had been from other than Allah, they would have found in it much discrepancy, right? Exactly. Now, in Allah's eternal word then, right? So this is before any of this has been revealed. This is before anything is revealed to Muhammad. This is before any specific um, historical situations. In Allah's eternal word, he has a verse saying that there are no discrepancies in this book. And he'll have a verse saying that you're supposed to do one thing. And he'll have a verse saying that you're supposed to do something completely different. Exactly. So, for so, for instance, uh, you go to one passage of the Quran and find out that the, the penalty for sexual sin is house arrest. You can go to another passage, find out that the penalty for sexual sin is lashes. And you go to the Hadith and find and out that the penalty for the sexual sin yeah. is stoning. You, fi you find all Which these different missing. things. Yeah. yeah, you find all, the, yeah, that's supposed to be in the Quran. And this is part of the eternal Quran because even though uh, a sheep, even though a sheep ate the verses, they're still part of Allah's eternal word. And so you have these different penalties, and there's no, and you have another verse saying there's no discrepancies. And this is in Allah's eternal word. So you have His eternal word, and you have all the verses that apply, 
And you have all the verses that are abrogated, and they're all mixed in there together, telling people to do completely different things, but there's no discrepancies in this eternal word. So this is the problem even the pagans of Muhammad's time could recognize. This is, you, what you're saying about the Quran makes no sense. There's no way you can possibly be a prophet, and that's why you have to fight and subjugate them. And, and interestingly, this, this contradicts two other eternal words, chapter 18, verse 27, and chapter 6, verse 115. It says, there is no changing to the words of Allah. None can change the words of Allah. Those passages have actually led certain Muslims like the late Muhammad Assad to deny the doctrine of abrogation. He actually admits, if you get his Quran commentary, he admits in his commentary that the doctrine of abro abrogation is traditionally uh, understood conflicts with these passages that say none mm -hmm. can change his words. But here we have many changes taking place by direct orders from Allah. Mm -hmm. So abrogation is a serious problem. Mm -hmm.